Hey, I'm Chef Brian Duffy, and this is Food School. We're gonna talk about the anatomy of a knife. When you first start off in culinary school, one of the first things that they give you is a knife. You live with this knife the entire time you're in culinary school. A French chef knife that has a heavier handle to it, along with a blade that's elongated. That's a classic chef knife. Many different varieties are out there. They have American knives, they have Japanese knives, German steel, whatever it is. This right here is a Japanese steel knife, but it's still in the same family as a chef knife. Now, there's seven different parts to a knife. It always starts with the tip. There's your tip right there. Then it works into the blade. This is the blade. Going up top, this is the back, okay? This down here, this is the bottom of the blade. This back here, this is the bolster, which goes up and it's kind of curved. As you can see, it curves out a little bit right there that then goes into the tang. The tang is the blade that runs all the way through the handle of the knife. Then you've got the handle of the knife, which is right here. Then you've got back here, this is the heel, okay? So now let's talk about the ways to hold the knife. A lot of times when I watch people that are using a knife, they're holding the knife and they're holding it like this. This is a very unprecise way to hold a knife, okay? A lot of times you'll see people that'll hold the knife and they put their finger right on the back of the blade. That's also not the proper way to hold the knife. The best way to hold the knife is to take your fingers. These are your first two fingers right here. You're gonna curl your middle finger underneath. These other fingers are gonna pull back. And this, this finger right here pretty much stays on the side of the blade. This over here, your thumb just kind of holds on to that edge, okay? Now, the two parts of the knife that are the most important are up here, right up at the tip that runs along that side right there down the blade, and then back here. This is where all your precision work is gonna happen. This is your super fine dicing. This is where your slicing is gonna happen. And then as you come back through here, this is the stronger part of the blade, okay? This is where you're gonna get your julienne, your batonette, your brunoise, your chiffonade, your chop, your mince, your dice, whatever it's gonna happen is all gonna happen right back through here. There's two main types of cut that you're gonna do. There's one that's called a pivot point. Now the pivot point is where you take your hand, you hold it on the top of the blade up towards the tip, and you roll the knife around like that. You're pivoting off of one point. The next cut is called a free pass, and the free pass is where we come in this way, and we free pass directly through the product that way. Now, everybody always says to me, do you ever cut yourself? Yep, I sure do. I cut myself all the time. It's just the nature of the beast of standing around with a very, very sharp knife. But one of the things that I've learned year after year after year is this right here. This is the claw, man. Use the claw. The key to using the claw is that the blade never, ever goes above your knuckle, okay? So you'll watch me when I cut. I rarely look at what I'm doing, but I'm always keeping that blade moving and I never, ever, ever have that blade go above my knuckle. Even if I'm chopping, I'm still chopping along like this. A lot of times you'll see me and I chop into myself because my knuckle right there is along the edge of that blade the whole time, okay? Once you feel comfortable with a knife, it's gonna make your cooking experience that much better.